You might have heard that all the stores are closing and the shareholders will be left with nothing. But is that true? Is there room in this modern market for an old brick and mortar retailer? The news would have you believe there isn't. Firstly, you might notice that stores were supposed to be closed on June 30th. Now we are halfway through July and many stores are still open. Why? Let's rewind and take a look. Not too long ago, Bed Bath & Beyond was growing quickly, over 1,500 stores. It was only six years ago a blog post like this would have been common, talking about a grand opening. They started renovating some of their stores and closing others. The market, all the way back in 2015 at least, according to Forbes, had uncertain consumer discretionary spending. The thing in 2020 didn't necessarily help with that. The stock market as a whole moved up. But when you look at the financials, it might have been the zero interest rates from the Fed rather than consumer confidence. When you look at the home good markets, for example, there are two main competitors for Bed Bath & Beyond, Wayfair and Amazon. Wayfair was pulling in some pretty big revenues, about double what Bed Bath & Beyond did, but it was losing money. Not only that, but their liabilities are almost double their assets. The next is Amazon. Amazon is big and has many different sectors, some of which are profitable, like AWS, which offset losses from selling home goods. I'm not saying that Amazon is failing. I bring it up merely to say that profitability in the home goods area, at least the last several years, has been difficult. And when you compare how Bed Bath & Beyond has done and what it is set to do, it has a relatively clear roadmap to profitability because it can close unprofitable stores and just keep open the ones that are profitable. That is just what they did in these economic conditions, especially with the data from 1,500 stores. They picked out the Goldilocks number of stores, 303. 265 Bed Bath & Beyond and 68 Bye Bye Babies and three distribution centers, and they closed the rest. That process, however, is not very easy outside of Chapter 11 restructuring, which is why they ended up there. A restructuring plan was accepted today, and they will be able to return to business as normal by the end of the month. There were four things holding Bed Bath & Beyond down, all of which were resolved through Chapter 11 and as a result of Ryan Cohen's involvement. Not only is Bed Bath & Beyond free of talked debt, but has a new partnership with Overstock. There was a lot of misinformation about Overstock's involvement. People were saying that Bed Bath & Beyond sold their name and had nothing left, but it is clear in the court dockets that the name Bed Bath & Beyond is shared between the two companies. It will be a much better partnership than with Blue Yonder, their old e-commerce solution, no offense to them. This is not financial advice. It's just an update of an iconic company that might become even more iconic if rumors are true.